is Catherine Lear, and I work for the Arts and Culture Center, and uh, I'm lucky enough today to be joined via Google Hangout with Buddy Wass's name and the other fellers as they approach a uh, 30th year, 30 year anniversary tour. Right, guys? That's right. Yes. Yeah, Catherine, you got it right. <laughs> um, is this your first Google Hangout? It is. Yes, yeah, we're really unfamiliar with it, as you can tell. <laughs> We're sort of gawking all over the screen. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Pioneer stuff for us. <laughs> yeah, you weren't doing this 30 years ago. <laughs> 30 years ago. We had a rotary dial phone in my basement. That's what we had. <laughs> no fax machines, no computers. <laughs> um, I guess, is, is that kind of the biggest change you've seen in the industry since you've been doing it in terms of technology and marketing yourselves and... Most certainly is one of the biggest changes. It, yeah. yeah. I mean, it allows us now to market ourselves. We used to rely on people to do that, but now we can do it on ourselves. Right. When we know how to work in things like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. It's not that hard. When, we, when we got started, that's when fax machines and computers came along. I mean, it's like almost five, ten, five, six, seven, eight years earlier. We probably wouldn't have been able to stay in small towns and do what we're doing now. But right. there's the advent of the fax and uh, computer and so mm. on, and all of a sudden we could create posters and we could do bookings, we could do all kinds of artwork and things like that by sending stuff to people who would put it together and get it back to us. But before that, we would have had to move the town or else use Canada Post. Right. <laughs> Some snail mail? Yeah. Well, we had to do that one time. It was all snail mail one time. Of course, we remember that very keenly, having to get all these things into the mail before the the tour arrived, right? Yeah. Right. You know, all the posters had to go out and you had to get all the contracts out, get them back, they were signed, and so then you had a you know, all that stuff had to be put together. But so you had to be doing it months in advance. Nowadays you can do it all through email and, and tomorrow if I'm going on the road, for instance, I can send something to somebody if it's not too late, you know. Yeah. You know, the contracts and those sorts of things. Posters are electronically transmitted now too. If wicked <laughs> The first computer I had was given to me by my father. It was an 8088. It was already outdated and had a monochromatic um, monitor. And so it was yellow. And um, it was in 1995, I think, or 1996. So it's not that long ago when you think about it. And so for a long time, I was just using that. But uh, that thus began the age of email. That was all brand new, too. So for us, email is still not quite 20 years old, is it? Not really? No. No, not quite. Although it's um, ironic, you know, in the sense that even with all the technology and all the enablement like that, still, right now, we have to get out and tour. There was a time when you could create it in studios and so on, and record sales, CD sales will be really, really great, but if you don't tour now, it's, uh, it's the main thing. That's, that's what the Beatles did, eh? That's what the Beatles that's did. That's what we had always hoped we were going to get there, man. Stay at home in the studio <laughs> and fly out to the world, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're almost. I'd say you're you're pretty close. <laughs> um, so the tour starts February seventh in Labrador. In Labrador, yeah. You can see that uh, your buddy Wass's name poster here behind me in my my cubicle. <laughs> um, and you'll finish in Stephenville in April. Yes, yeah, yeah. I guess by that point you'll have completed an incredible thirty-five shows. Thirty-five. And then we got a little bit of a break before going to Ontario for another week. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Yeah. So well, I know I'm I'm actually taking you away from some of your rehearsal time right now. But can you talk a bit about what you do to prepare for such a big tour? For eighteen months, we get real lazy because the last show uh, is is <laughs> you know so easy just to get up and do. Yeah. And so then three weeks before we go on tour, we go into a great big panic. <laughs> oh my God! We got no, <laughs> we got no material. What are we going to do? So then we. We put it all together, all the ideas we've been saving up for, for a year and a half, we put them together, and then it's this intensive three days, and always the same thing. So three days, somewhere like a week or two before we start the gig, that's what we did. We just punch it all together, and now it's up to us to go home and memorize everything that we decided we'd do. But right. Catherine, the good news is we folded everything, picked up our instruments and our papers and all that sort of stuff, and put it away around 20 minutes before you contacted us. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're happy. Yeah. We're happy. <laughs> Until... Five minutes before the first show. <laughs> well, things are going good. It's going really well. We're happy with the new show. Uh, you know, as, as the title would indicate, 30 years, we've gone back more so than ever and pulled out some of the successful stuff that we had in the past. So we're doing a lot of the greatest hits. We've got new stuff, but 
probably more the older stuff, the, the old goodies more than ever. So the almost great hits, the almost great hits, yeah. the, the the so so hits, <laughs> the the almost hit, the misses. Yeah, the greatest misses, <laughs> the misses. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm sure. I'm sure the fans will be happy to hear that. That uh, a lot well, of the old things. good stuff in it. Yeah, you know, yes. and just throw something else, Catherine. What we did a little while ago is we went online, uh, Facebook, and so on, and asked people to suggest the songs and pieces that they'd like. And it's amazing. We did a tabulation yesterday morning, and we'd gone ahead and put ahead put together the new show. But an incredible amount of the on. suggestions were already included in the set list we had. So yeah. we were pretty close to the mark what they wanted. You know? Oh, mm. great, great. Yeah, pretty good. So we're going to be doing Fruit Loopy, man. Remember that one? You don't remember Fruit Loopy? Remember Bar Two? I'm Fruit Loopy, Fruit Loopy, Fruit Loopy over, over you. you. Oh, you are the only trouble sugar plum is you're not Loopy too. Oh, the way you treat me, darling, I think your all is lost. Your love for me ain't peachy. It's more like, like a squash. Isn't it great? Yeah. <laughs> great. It's a love song. <laughs> 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 I guess. Uh, do you have? A, you've been you've been doing this for so long now that I'm wondering and touring the arts and culture centers, of course, mm -hmm. every every other year. And I'm wondering if you have any favorite uh, tour stops or rituals while you're on the road, either here in the province or across the country. Or hmm, that's an interesting question. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. There's so uh, there's something special about every center, you know, be it the, you know the building or the people or something. There's always you know every place we go. There's no place we don't like to go. And uh, almost every place that we go, there's, there's some reason to look forward to it, you know? I like, yeah. um, I do particularly like the, the St. John's Arts and Culture Center. I suppose it's the, it's the audience, and, the, and just it's the largest audience, so you get yeah, the biggest kind of noise, and the biggest kind of crowd, and, and that's always a highlight to do that. But then there's Grand Falls that always buys the most merchandise per person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then there's another group that's the loudest, uh, yeah. another group that you know buys the tickets quicker than everybody else. Then so. of course there's Labrador City and Goose Bay. They invite yeah. us out for a beautiful meal before we perform that night. That's and something. And that's quite yes. something. The people in Labrador oh. invite us out for food. Yeah. <laughs> hint, hint, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, you know, not well, everybody does it. Well, actually, um, I'm getting to it later, but I took a bunch of um, Facebook questions <laughs> Facebook questions from all the various arts and culture centers, and one woman from Stephenville named Gina Feltham MacArthur said, oh, yeah. are you coming to my house for moose soup when you play here? <laughs> no, of course, we, are, we have to get back to around that. We have one. to get back to that. <laughs> we know her. We taught her. Yeah, Gina. God love her. Unless we get a better offer, guys. <laughs> That's true. Yes. yes. <laughs> soup, soup is, is winning so far. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, this could be for all of you, or any of, or one of you. Um, any memorable moments that kind of particularly stick out for you over the years? I mean, I'm sure there are oh, hundreds yeah. or thousands, but anything that you. <laughs> Ray, maybe? <laughs> well, there's one that actually comes to mind where a young fellow I invited up on the stage and he sang Sarah with us. And he oh, actually wow. where was blew everyone away. So I never forget that particular moment. It was wonderful. I think it was in uh, Grand Falls or Gander. I'm not quite sure, but Grand anyway, I think it was Grand Falls, yeah. Oh, I'll nice. never forget the time you blew us away. I blew you away? Yeah, <laughs> blew us away. In what, what, the uh, time you got diarrhea on stage. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> well, we won't go into that. <laughs> that was a memorable moment, eh? That was a memorable moment. Yes, sir. Yes. Kadia University. Yes. That would have been 1994. Yes. There was no roof on the cover either. Or the cooper on the roof. <laughs> Last time in Grand Falls, uh, Catherine, we had a, a, a young man, well, a, a kid really. I think he's about 12 years old, and he was. Uh, incredible accordion player and he wanted to play for us and oh. we were doing a book signing at the mall and he came out there's a whole raft of people around us and he walked up to us and said guys I know all your songs what do you want to hear so he sang Is You Happy in front of us and Kevin and I joined in and the people clapped it was just wonderful and he came to the show that evening after the show he pulled out the accordion and entertained us yes. and about a hundred other people in the lobby so that was unforgettable that's you know? so that's wow that's amazing yeah. that's did you little photo we uh, we all we have an awful lot of you know anecdotal material. We could be here, could be here for a long time talking about <laughs> talking about things that have happened to us on the road. You know, 
things like um, yeah. <laughs> leaving the keys in the car running outside Gander Airport, rushing to get a flight. And <laughs> we all got an airport story, oh, but that's is, Wayne's. Yeah. Tell that's him, Wayne. That's mine. Tell him. Yeah. So I arrived in Lab West all ready for the show. I got everything done, you know, got the rehearsal done, got my gear together, made it to the plane. I'm here. Phone rings in the hotel room and says, and this is my wife. And she said, sweetheart, uh, got some news for you. I just had a call from a security guy who happened to know you, recognize you. He found your vehicle still running outside of the airport. <laughs> and we're in Labrador. <laughs> we're in Labrador. <laughs> but it's only in Gander Airport you know you can get away with it, right? Forgot but. to put it in the parking lot and take my keys. <laughs> so he, he parked it, took the keys and called my wife and says, wow, well, he's too busy, girl. <laughs> and then we... <laughs> After the Air India crash in 1985, we were in Toronto for a summer doing an engagement for 10 days, and Ray went home. Now, you got to imagine that airport security wasn't that heightened back then, but there were security checks. You had to go through a security check. But um, Ray had not flown a whole lot, I think. No. Probably not. Not up to that point. Not up to that point. And we were going home. And Ray got pulled out of the line, lineup, you know, behind us. We hadn't even gone through any metal detectors yet, and Ray got pulled out of the lineup behind us. We were kind of wondering why. And he was carrying a machine gun and a set of 12 knives. Plastic machine gun for his son. For my son. That's not true. only a gift for the wife and the young fella. What are you concerned about? Yes, sir, but it's a machine gun and a, and a knife with a 14-inch blade on it. <laughs> Uh, good moments. Good moments. And then I, I was up to my cabin there about five years ago, and um, upon leaving the cabin, strapped everything on the Comatic. This was February month. Strapped everything on the Comatic down with an elastic band, and then last going out the door before I locked it, I took the kitchen knife, and not knowing what to do with it, I couldn't strap it on anything underneath the tarp, so I shoved it in my mandolin case. Do you know the next time I looked at that? <laughs> Going through security. <laughs> and, and, I, I was there too. and the woman said, uh, Kevin, uh, what do you have in that uh, in, in that case, sir? And Kevin says, oh, my dear, I got a beautiful eight-string mandolin. You want to buy it or what? And she said, well, you got something more than that. And he said, I don't think so. And he, she said, would you open it up, please? And Kevin still didn't clue into it. And he opened the case. And there's, this, there's this kitchen knife, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they still let you through. <laughs> and only as some good it was Gander Airport, they bought it. Like, well, you know, he's a friend of your mother's. Yeah, 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 Mrs. Prim. I knew her as Mrs. Prim, you know, all the while I was going up there. <laughs> oh, my, Kevin. She said, Oh, my. I'm afraid you can't boy, take that can't on, boy. Take, boy. What are we going to do with it? I said, Fart in the garbage. <laughs> no, I can't do that. It's too good a knife. I'll bring it down to your mother's. Is that okay? <laughs> I got the knife back. <laughs> and then going yeah, to Toronto the Airport there. there last year. Didn't they take two little wrenches, two little wrenches from me because I was going to pick apart the aircraft? <laughs> a 10 millimeter wrench and a 7 16 millimeter wrench. That's for putting the banjo back together. I didn't really need the wrenches then. Tell them about the banjo. <laughs> no. That's another story. <laughs> All right, well, well, we were going on the road, and, and, and one of the airline baggage handlers decided he was going to destroy the banjo in Byron's case, <laughs> and so they opened it up, and they beat the back in on it and put it back together, and this is done so that people will complain to the airlines, you know, and <laughs> the baggage handlers in the airline really bad, but this is what they want to do. So I took my little banjo on the road to the next trip, so we went to Ontario. And I said, well, the thing I'll do is I'll disassemble it. I took the neck off. I took that in my hand. I put the banjo rim. I put that in, a, in my luggage. And when I got to Ontario, I reassembled it. That's, I had two little wrenches. Reassembled perfect. Got it all back together, right? Didn't have a case for it. So coming out of the first engagement in Mississauga, next morning was raining. And I wouldn't put the banjo flat down on the ground while we packed the van. I laid it on top of the van. I laid the banjo on top of the van. We were out on the 401. <laughs> <laughs> when, when a fellow pulls up alongside us, over, and he's, he's over, going like this, pull over. <laughs> we pull over. A banjo, he said. We just pulled over, and this fellow said, A banjo just flew off your roof two, two kilometers back. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't take much. anyone out, did you? We didn't go back for it. It was no. about eight lanes of traffic in one direction. It would have been a half hour to get around the loop to get back out to see it. A right up. On nom de padre, head de visa, de saint esprit. Yeah. Poor banjo. Amen. Um, <laughs> actually, the story is written up as a blog uh, on our website, Catherine. Mm -hmm. Okay, buddyuasisname.com, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
matter of fact, we had okay, well. writing odes to the banjo after that. <laughs> I, I would of say. Course, we could go on all day. <laughs> <laughs> Memorable I'm moments. Hmm. I'm wondering what, um, I guess moving on to your material and, and the creative process, what inspires or who has or does still inspire you for your material? Both comedic and serious. Well, I guess a lot of the stuff that I do is based on my upbringing in my hometown of Dropsko, where I once lived. But the characters that come from that particular community, I kind of bring it to the boys and we kind of work on it and bring it into the form of a skit and then we put it on stage and there it is. And of course, the same with the traditional stuff I do with the square dance tunes and the series of stuff, you know, but what a glow of the carry scene like written by Wince Coles and other great people, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Any thoughts, Kev? Oh, I've got lots of thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> <laughs> Bonzo Dog Doodah Band, Spike Jones, Monty Python, all the comedy I've ever seen. Jerry Lewis, Tommy Smothers. Those are the things that keep inspiring me. And every, every time I review old stuff, I get excited again, you know? <laughs> um, because for, for putting together novelty music, some of these things are are the, the way that I was formed as a comedian, you know? And then, of course, from a Newfoundland perspective, I find so much of what Newfoundland music is to be sort of rich anyway, but when people in Newfoundland write novelty and comedy stuff, like like Wince Coles writes comedy stuff, that stuff is amazingly funny. And I, I it's But it's very uh, culturally centric. Nobody outside of our little culture will understand it, you know? But I find that the more that that's the case, the richer it is. And that's why we're sort of stuck somewhere in the middle. We, we've we got a fair reach. We can reach out to anybody who kind of has a notion about Newfoundland culture. But beyond that, it doesn't carry, right? But it's an intriguing thing to try and make our comedy reach broader circles, you know, and still have it culturally centric. So that's the sort of stuff that intrigues me all the time, anyway. And, you know, the lo local okay. Newfoundland characters, just to talk to them and to speak to them, to see them, to, to un understand the way they think, you know, and it doesn't matter who they are, it can be anybody, from from the streets of St. John's all the way out to the tip of St. Anthony or into Labrador, find an awful lot of people who are just inspirational by the things they say and the quick wit, you know. That's the stuff, you know. Yeah. Write notes, take notes, mm -hmm. take pictures, metal pictures. <clears throat> Yeah, that actually, one of the Facebook questions from uh, one of our patrons, Virginia Phillips Duffany, I hope Duffany. I said her last name correctly. Duffany, 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 Duffany. She, uh, she said, do you think non-Newfoundlanders understand your jokes? <clears throat> There's an incredible number of people who uh, will make an effort, because as you know, if you travel much, you will realize that Newfoundland is kind of very popular these days. Like if you, wherever you go in Canada, people find out you're from Newfoundland. I've been there, I loved it, or I'm going to go there, or I have to go. There's a buzz about the place, you know, because of all the comedians and writers and painters and all and that's that sort of stuff. But it's uh, it's really interesting to uh, to see that an awful lot of people want to understand. And when they hear Newfoundlanders talking, you know, they hear Bayman talking and so on and so forth, they're curious now. Because this is interesting stuff. There's something going on there that we want to know about. There was a time when it was just ignored, joked yeah. about, and brushed away. But uh, more so, we find that, that people are truly interested in what we're up to. Yeah, yeah I think we have you to thank as part of that for kind uh, of leading the way there. Thank you so much. Uh, there's a lot of good. Oh, yes, I think so, boys. I, I think we have one. But you know, there's another thing too: is that the world is becoming smaller so fast. Yeah. Exactly. With the you know these devices we're using, once upon a time, the only way we could get anything of anybody else's culture was to pick up a book or a magazine or pick up a record or an LP. You know, but uh, just think about the abilities. You know, of, of you to open up Google Hangout now, and anybody on the planet can can join us here technically. And it's, it's like your your balcony TV. Anybody can watch that. And I've watched all those from all around the planet. It's incredible, eh? That's something that's really recent, obviously. You know that. But I think these are the things which make our culture spread very yeah. quickly. And feel you feel very small now on a large planet. But but the reach the reach is increasing. Um, an yeah. awful lot of people don't understand what we're doing. But, but they have the ability to sort of watch us now and, and go online and if they don't quite understand 
the language, they'll at least understand the antics and the comedy and the faces and the humor. Right. Yeah. Just just to kind of add to what Kevin was saying, or just this morning we all had an email, and I, I responded to it, but it was a young man in a punk band in Ontario, in Toronto. <laughs> Sandy, he's on to our music. The boys love what we're doing and so on and so forth. And what time are you guys going to put out on LPs? They said, put your music in LPs. And I got back to them and I said, well, realize now, we've been at this for 30 years. The fir our first two records, making making for the Harbor and Dodds and Wink, is the only way to do it for us. So we still have violent copies if you'd like That's one. That's right. To buy one. <laughs> to buy one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the world has shrunk. And, I mean, punk, you know, or whatever, you know. The kids up in Ontario are, are talking to us, and we're talking to them, and so on. You know? Yeah, which is really interesting, isn't it? Yeah, cross-cultural yeah. references. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I mean, we we get fans around the world. Like, there's a guy in Australia that's really singing our praises all over the place. So, a few years ago, this couldn't happen. So, this is a good thing. Bridging, we call that bridging. Bridging. Right. Yeah. <laughs> do you, um, as as performers, what do you think has changed the most in the way you entertain? and conduct business and kind of interact with each other, if anything. It just gotten easier, I suppose. You get to know somebody, if you're working with them for 30 years, so just trying try to size up whether it's been more than half my life. And it has been more than half my life I've been doing this with the boys. But you get to know them the same as you get somebody, you know somebody in a marriage, you know. And uh, the other thing is that you get to know your business so that we conduct all aspects of our business. Wayne and his wife do all the financial Things they look after the books. They look at the bookkeeping. Wayne, you got all the money. Yeah. No, no. no. <laughs> and so I do the I do the contracting and the booking and the touring arrangements. And Ray does PR. Mm -hmm. But those jobs get easier because you get to know them. Yeah. Right. In terms of what it takes to entertain somebody and walk on stage and entertain them, that hasn't changed much. It still requires. But I think we we get better at it. I think we get better. We get smoother. We certainly have improved a lot as a, as a musical group. We've improved a lot. When we started, we weren't really very good at all. <laughs> Boys, I think it's a good time to give our good friend who just designed that poster behind you. We should yeah. talk. Give him his name, boys. Go ahead. Rob, what's his last name? Gardner. <laughs> No, no, Rob no. Zeeb. Oh, the guy who designed it? Yes, or oh, took the right. photograph, you know. Oh, took the photograph. Yes. The photographer, yeah. yeah. He's got the weirdest kind of last name, S-W-Y-R-D. Yes, I he's, think it's only right to give him credit. Swear, swear, swear. 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 Yeah. Yeah. He never did say his last name. We don't know. Edmonton. <laughs> Edmonton. <laughs> He'll be happy anyway that you're talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and also, it's time to talk about Byron, the bass player. He's also pictured on that poster. Yes. And I don't know, but it might be the first poster we put him on. First poster, yeah. Byron joined us in 1999. Yeah. And and he's been with us ever since, which is hard to believe. It's a long time. Mm. And it's gone so quickly. And right. Byron is um, one of the biggest reasons we've improved a lot, because he's he's probably the best musician amongst us. He's certainly the most able, and and certainly one of the the what? He's technically the best. Musically, he's but musically is better than this. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. And so, do you have um, any advice for people who are kind of just beginning their careers? What the the key to longevity in this business? Yeah, is? a lot of advice. Oh, actually, want to write us? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. First, first of all, it's just about a few pointers. Yeah, I always say this, and I I say it with a bit of tongue in cheek, but I think it's the difference between a successful group and a non-successful group is learn business, and if you're to do anything at all to help your little group go, <laughs> learn learn simple accounting. <laughs> it's, it's not learn your guitar, and no, it's not learn how to sing. Good. Those things are innate anyway. You generally find that all the young musicians who want to form groups are already very good musicians or they're very good at what that skill is. But what they're not good at is they're not good at the accounting. And they think that the accounting is a little trifle that they have to look out look at after the performing is done. And when in effect it's it's half of the it's half of the picture. The yeah. business the business is half of the picture. Your success You're only successful. On a lot, right? Yes, Incredibly. you're only as successful as the bookkeeping is. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course, the other one is uh, interpersonal relationships. I mean, if if a band is starting, I mean, right up front, somebody's got to tell them, okay, control your ego, find out who you are, what your strengths and weaknesses are, recognize it, 
and look for the same thing in the other two or three or four mm. and then respect it and work with that. Don't try to fight and, and have one person prominent or whatever. And you put the puzzle together piece by piece and make it work. And uh, because most bands, what they'll do, they'll never, ever, 90% of the bands won't get past that problem because there it will be a struggle of egos. Who's going to prevail? There will be a fight and the band is finished. And I'll give you a prime example. The Beatles. I'm still pissed off with them. <laughs> they should have worked <laughs> things out from an interpersonal point of view and yeah. they still be, should be doing it. No, that's the big thing, really. I mean, because uh, that, that gives you all kinds of problems, you know. Yeah. When you don't respect and recognize the gift that one of the members got, uh, you know, or has, and uh, very important. Could very yeah, temporarily just to... tell you about what we found in in our experience is that um, Ray is, uh, for instance, he's our he's our primary melody man, and being so strong on the instruments as he is, the fiddle and accordion, like Ray's abilities there have been the rock on which we've founded our music. And Wayne is a guitar man, but he's real steady on timing. And also, he's a, a brilliant songwriter. He's a strong songwriter. And that's his gift. And my gift was one of just being kind of loony and, and some, some abilities on, on a bunch of different instruments. But by and large, I think the voice box is the thing that I lend to it. And it's, it's that simple trio, uh, that th those three things, which are the foundation of what we do. Because now we have a musical comedy act that's got a real solid musical base. And it's never ever trying to usurp another fellow's ability to highlight your own. So it's always we've always chief for the balance. But the second thing is that we've always tried to do is we've always tried to make sure that we respect the other fellow and, and create the balance where we can highlight that person in the show. It's just a balance thing. Oh, you know? God, we're teaching the course, all right, we might hear? Another little thing to Kevin before we move on, another very important thing is to exploit exploit every bit of talent you have. You know, if you're going to be in it, you said, you ask us, you know, uh, what does it take to be in it in the long run? Well, mm -hmm. it's exploit every gift you have and every, every ability because you, you have to have variety. You have to spread out. Otherwise, if you're very narrow in what you present, you're gonna you're gonna have a you're gonna have a hard time unless you're very very gifted and you come up with some incredibly incredible gems, you know, uh, yeah. hit songs or whatever. Fine, that's fine and dandy. But if you're gonna stay in the long run, I mean, you got to learn to dance and sing and act. In our show, you'll see recitations, a cappella. You'll see all kinds of instruments being played, acting. You know, it may not be great, but skits, mimes, dialogues, monologues, and so on and so forth. But I guess we try to stretch ourselves as much as we can, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. good advice for anyone, really, in any profession. One other thing, too, and, and, and this is sort of the clue it all up, because I notice most groups, when they get together, and I was guilty of it, too, when I was a young artist, what I wanted to do on stage is what I enjoyed. And that's not what the audience wanted. Right. After a while, you, you get to know what the audience wants, and even though you have an ability to do so much more, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's entertaining at all. I could sit down and play guitar for myself all day and think it sounds wonderful, but it's not what the audience wants to hear from me, you know? Yeah. So we should probably cap this off now uh, with one Jim from Ray Johnson. What are you going to say, Ray? <laughs> well, I think the boys have summed it up quite nicely. I couldn't say it any better. A pretty face, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Probably like need a pretty face. <laughs> oh, that, well, that too, yeah. <laughs> but I did still believe, too, wholeheartedly, that you have to also believe, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. That's it, isn't it, boys? Mm. Yes, great. It's good advice, good advice. Yeah, thank you. I, um, I think... I'll move on to some of the some more of the questions from the people who are probably going to be filling the seats at the centers. <laughs> um, of course, one of the most one of the most common questions that we got multiple times was, "Is you happy?" <laughs> oh yes. Is Can you happy? Still, yeah. Yes. Well, it's going to be in the new yes. show. Leave yeah. it at yes. It will be performed. Leave it at yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Judy Ann Watson asked, how have you managed to stay together for so long? And, and she says, you must be very compatible, which you've kind of touched on, but if you want to elaborate on that a bit. Well, compatible in some ways, but also you had to work on it. You know, there were tensions in the past and we got to know each other and so on and so forth and worked on it. 
but it does it does take walking away and uh, pondering and coming back and uh, sticking with it. You know. Every now and again, you need a meal of humble pie and right. dessert of crow. You need a lot of crow. <laughs> right. Yeah. We've, we got one from. Uh... I just wanted to answer that one a little more. One yeah. of the tricks we learned too was we couldn't live in one another's pockets. Right. And so we limited the amount of touring we did. We, we still only do 75, 80 shows a year, and that would be a lot of shows now, I think. But yeah. And if we go on, on on tour, we never stay out for more than two weeks. When we come back, we'll have a two-week break. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're not working intensively together a lot, because you find when you're in one another's company, 24 be. hours at a time, you, you wear on one another, and it, there's right. no two yeah. people on the planet that won't. Right? Yeah. Management. Yeah, a lot of management. Yeah. Next yeah. question. Next, <laughs> next question. Chris Batten said, as Kevin said to me in Corner Book, that's great, but can you hang a door? <laughs> oh, <laughs> was, that. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> We've got, um, I think we have, oh, she, okay, uh, Gina Feltham, again, MacArthur, had another question, and she wanted to know, what's harder, coming up with new comedy bits or new serious stuff? I don't know that they're it, it different. Can, it can be tough in both cases, and mm. it can be easy in both cases. Sometimes there's the inspiration, and it just flows like water from a tap yeah. in both cases. And the same is true. You know, like you, sometimes you get a brilliant idea, and you know this is really worth working on, but it comes grudgingly. But it's a kidney it's, stone. It's a kidney stone kidney that you have to pass. Mm. And you got to work on it long and hard, <laughs> both with the serious and also with the humorous stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of kidney stones. <laughs> One of them took six years to come out. That was the chainsaw Earl. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, the tough one was the chainsaw Earl, six years. An easy one, The Pits, was written between Port Blanford and Charlottetown on the way back from St. John's. At 60 is, miles an hour. At 60 miles an hour, <laughs> which was 20 minutes. It was done, words and music, and we got together the next day, started to sing it, went on stage and got re recorded. So that was 20 minutes of, of uh, pure pleasure. It was just me singing it to myself, basically, right? So... <laughs> That's the kind of gifts that you hope for. It's like somebody said to Ben Cohen one time. He said, uh, where did Suzanne come from? And he said, I don't really know. But if I did, I'd go back there more often. Oh, awesome. <laughs> um, okay, a few little, a few little quick fast fire questions for you. Um, we can start with Ray, maybe. Performance or recording? Well, believe it or not, to answer that, later in life, I would like to go in a recording studio and play music I haven't touched on yet. There's something inside me saying I have to be more creative. Not to say what I'm doing is not right, but there's something inside me still want me to go into the studio and record. I don't know if that answers your question. Answer that me. does, yeah, no, it's good. Yes. Um, okay, how about um, Wayne, Big Mac or Fort Mac? Fort Mac. <laughs> For me, that would have been Big Mac, Big Mac truck. <laughs> song Chris Elliott and I put together, yeah. Big Mac truck. <laughs> um, Kevin, John Wayne or Little Wayne? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, John Wayne, of course. I, um, I, like, I like cowboy yeah, western like movies, and my yeah, favorite. Yeah. 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 I think, I think the next one you could each answer maybe, uh, starting with Ray, Buddy or Kevin. Buddy will do. <laughs> Wait. Kiv. <laughs> K I V. <laughs> I'll Kevin? take. I'll take either, because often it's being written on something like a check, and that's that's good. Yeah. <laughs> now if it's a ticket. Say like a traffic ticket. I'll tell him put down buddy because that's pretty, you know, that's pretty <laughs> ubiquitous. That could be anywhere. Hmm. <laughs> um, Wayne, Chainsaw Earl or Saltwater Joys? Uh, Saint Saltwater Joys was much easier to write. That was written in a day. <laughs> <laughs> the other one was six years. <laughs> wow. Okay, uh, Kevin, Muskrat Falls or Niagara Falls? Muskrat Falls. I found it way more impressive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we stood by the side of it last yeah. year. Did you? 
I hope you got pictures. We do, yeah. My heart. My heart. Well, so we got a lot of feeling in here from the power that it was coming yeah. from that area. Yeah, it's, it was a great spirit. It was not electrical power. Yet. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Next. Next. Give a comment. This is Snappers. Next. <laughs> Next. That's it. That's all I got. Well, that's that's all wonderful. Got. Yes. Oh, oh, come on. Give us one of your own. That'll be original. <laughs> the, oh, they were on my own. They all were right. all your own. Oh, I thought you were from Fan. That's good. We far one at Uden. All Just, right. Here we go. Or the one behind you. <laughs> <laughs> this one for sure. <laughs> Although that one got a microwave in it. Can you see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I see the microwave yeah. and the little fridge. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> That's right. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. You're more than welcome. And, uh, I have no doubt that you'll be playing once again to sold-out audiences across the province. Yeah. I know. And if people want to find out um, where they can go near them or if they want to buy tickets, I know for any of the Arts and Culture shows, they can do so online at www.artsandculturecenter.com. But I think they can also uh, get linked through your website as well, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is uh, buddywasshisname.com. Yes. So thank mean. you for joining us here today. All right. Thank you very much. How many hits did we get on Balcony TV so far? Have you, you know? <laughs> oh, it's over a thousand, I think, for sure. Oh, good, good, good. Good <laughs> stuff. Well, anyway, have Thanks. a good one. Bye bye. Have a good Thanks, one. Bye. Thanks very much. Take care. See you, Bye. bye. bye.